In this video, we will discuss carbon dioxide, its reactions with hydrogen, hemoglobin and oxygen. We will also discuss carbon dioxide carriage and its removal from the body. So what is the relationship of hemoglobin and carbon dioxide? If carbon dioxide is low, the hemoglobin curve moves to the left, so delivering less oxygen to the tissues. If carbon dioxide is high, then hemoglobin curve moves to the right, so delivering more oxygen to the tissues. So PCO2 more, it shifts the curve to the right, hemoglobin delivers more oxygen to the tissue. When PCO2 decreases, shift curves to the left and hemoglobin delivers less oxygen to the tissue. Deoxygenated hemoglobin has higher affinity for carbon dioxide. Deoxygenated blood can carry more carbon dioxide whereas oxygenated blood has less carbon dioxide carrying capacity. Therefore, at tissue level, when hemoglobin releases oxygen, carbon dioxide attaches to hemoglobin. So, increased carbon dioxide can be carried by the blood back to the lungs. So, what happens in the lung? When oxygen binds with hemoglobin, carbon dioxide is released. Why hemoglobin releases carbon dioxide when it combines with oxygen in the lungs? Number one, when hemoglobin combines with oxygen, it becomes a stronger acid so it releases carbon dioxide in the alveoli. Arterial blood has a pH of 7.4. Addition of carbon dioxide lowers the venous blood pH to 7.37. And number two in the lungs, a decrease in the hydrogen ion increases the binding of oxygen to hemoglobin. How hydrogen ion decreases? Hydrogen combines with bicarbonate to form carbonic acid which is a weak acid breaks into carbon dioxide and water and carbon dioxide is expelled out of the body. This shifts the curve to the left. Partial pressure. What are the partial pressures of carbon dioxide? in the air, in the arterial and venous blood. PCO2 at sea level is 0.3 millimeters of mercury and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood is 40 millimeters of mercury and in the venous blood is 46 millimeters of mercury. How much carbon dioxide is added in the tissue? Arterial blood carries 49 milliliters of carbon dioxide per 100 ml whereas venous blood carries 53 ml of carbon dioxide per 100 ml. So there is a difference of 4 ml per 100 ml of carbon dioxide between the arterial and venous blood which is added in the tissues. How much carbon dioxide is carried at PCO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury in the arterial blood and how? At a PCO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury carbon dioxide is 49 millimeters per 100 ml. The breakup is as follows. 90% of the carbon dioxide is carried as bicarbonate that makes 43.8 ml. 10% each carries as carbamino compound and in a dissolved state that is 2.6 milliliter each. Carbamino compounds are carried as bound to hemoglobin and plasma proteins. Carbon dioxide is 20 times more soluble than oxygen. How much carbon dioxide is removed from the body? Arterial blood carries 49 ml carbon dioxide per 100 ml and venous blood carries 53 ml carbon dioxide per 100 ml. So there is a difference of 4 ml per 100 ml. This is the amount of carbon dioxide removed per 100 ml. So it's 40 ml per liter and if there is 5 liters of blood that makes it 200 ml of carbon dioxide. So 200 ml of carbon dioxide per minute is removed from the body. What's the effect of addition of carbon dioxide on the pH? It decreases the pH from 7.4 to 7.36. How carbon dioxide is removed from the body? Carbon dioxide is removed from the body by a process of diffusion. What's diffusion? Transfer of a solute across from higher concentration to lower concentration. It's a passive process and does not require energy. How carbon dioxide is removed? There are four sites or processes involved in carbon dioxide removal. In the RBC, in tissues, in the plasma, in the lungs and a chloride shift. So what happens in the RBC? In the RBC carbon dioxide combines with water to form carbonic acid H2CO3 which is a weak acid. The enzyme is carbonic anhydrase. Carbonic acid H2CO3 breaks into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate ions. The hydrogen ion produced in these reactions are buffered by hemoglobin. Bicarbonate is the major form in which carbon dioxide is carried. About 90% of carbon dioxide is carried as bicarbonate. bicarbonate 
carbonate leaves RBC dissolves in plasma and is carried to the lungs. To maintain electrical neutrality, what substance enters RBC in exchange for bicarbonate? When bicarbonate diffuses into the plasma, to maintain the electrical neutrality, chloride enters into the RBC. So the chloride content of the RBC is very high on the venous side of the blood. And what happens in the lung? In the lung, all reactions are reversed. Bicarbonate enters the RBC from the plasma and in the RBC bicarbonate combines with hydrogen ion to form carbonic acid which breaks into carbon dioxide and water and carbon dioxide is expired out of the lung. What's chloride shift? In the lung bicarbonate enters back into the RBC to maintain the electrical neutrality. Chloride comes out of the RBC to enter into plasma and this is known as chloride shift. This is the reverse what happens in the tissues. In the tissues to maintain the electrical neutrality when bicarbonate diffused into the plasma chloride entered into the RBC so chloride content of the RBC was very high on the venous side of the blood bicarbonate comes out of the RBC into plasma and chloride into the RBC so in the tissues bicarbonate is out of the RBC into the plasma and chloride into the RBC whereas in the lungs bicarbonate goes back into the RBC and chloride goes out of the RBC into the plasma